All right, today we're going to pick up right where we left off yesterday, and there's just one more thing that we need to learn about synthetic division, and that is what about dividing something that actually does have a coefficient there. So you'll notice that in all of yesterday's homework, it was just a binomial x plus or minus a number, but now we're going to actually add a coefficient in there. And the one thing that we need to know about synthetic division is that it is faster, but we can't actually use it if we do have a degree 2 divisor. So it's only used for single degree or degree one um, divisors, and now it's time to learn how to deal with it if it does have a coefficient. It's a little funky, so sometimes I prefer to just use long division in this case, but um, I'm sure some people would be interested in how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our setup. We're going to set up our lines, and we're going to put our dividend at the top there like normal. Okay, or the coefficients, sorry. So we've got a 12. Don't forget about placeholders. And in descending order of powers, we get a 2, we have an 11, and we have a 16. Now, if this had just been um, the binomial x plus 2, we would have put a 2 over here. So you can probably guess that instead of just 2, we're now going to put 2 over 3. So we are dealing with a fraction, but hopefully things work out nicely and it doesn't become too much of an issue. Okay, so just like we did yesterday, we're now going to bring down our 12. And now we are going to multiply 12 times 2 thirds. And thankfully for us, 12 times 2 thirds gives us a nice number is 8. Now we're going to do 2 subtract 8 to get negative 6. And then again, we're now going to do negative 6 times 2 thirds. And again, we get a nice number. We get negative 4. And then we're going to do 11 subtract negative 4, so 11 plus 4, which gives me 15. And we're going to do 15 times 2 thirds, which gives us 10. And then our last subtraction, we get 6. Okay, so I just kind of like to separate here. Here, our remainder is 6. Okay, nothing is weird about that. Now, this, of course, is our quotient, okay, kind of working backwards. So we would have 12x squared minus 6x plus 15. This is always your constant term, and you just kind of work backwards. Except what we do here is we divide all of these coefficients by the coefficient of the divisor. So in this case, we divide by 3. So our quotient isn't actually 12x squared minus 6x plus 15. Our quotient is actually 4x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now, I just wrote it like that because we're going to set up the rest. This is our division statement, of course. So we found out that 12x cubed, hopefully I have enough space here, plus 2x squared, plus 11x, plus 16, divided by 3x plus 2, equals our quotient, and then again we always have our remainder over 3x plus 2. Again, it's a little bit of a method, um, but it is how you can do synthetic division even with, with a coefficient. And if you don't want to have to remember that division at the end, then I always say just do long division if the binomial is not just simple x plus 1, x plus 2, x minus 5. Okay, so now we're going to move on today. We're lear going to learn about something called the remainder theorem. Okay, and the remainder theorem is when we take a polynomial and we divide it by x minus k, we can actually simply find the remainder by just putting in this k value here into the polynomial and evaluating. Okay, so what do I mean by that? In this case, in our first example, we're going to take this and divide it by this. So, of course, we can do long division, we can do synthetic division, but some of you will have figured out that it does take a little bit of time. So, it's going to be useful for us to know the remainder theorem because all we have to do is take the k value, which in this case would be negative 1, right? If the standard binomial is x minus k in the theorem, it would be negative 1, and we simply sub it into the polynomial. Okay, so our solution simply looks looks like this. We would find the remainder by taking the polynomial evaluated at negative 1. And of course that means we're just going to sub in negative 1 everywhere we see an x. You've done this many times by now. 
minus 6 times negative 1 plus 5. Okay, and you can go ahead and evaluate that, and you should be able to see that we get 1 when you substitute that in. So this means that the remainder is 1. Now, how could you verify that? Of course, to make sure you did your work correctly, you could actually perform synthetic division or long division like this, and you should get that 1 left over at the very, very end. Okay, so we're going to use this theorem. We're going to use it as we go through the rest of the unit, but we're also going to use it to answer questions that look like Okay, so this one looks just a little bit different. It says determine the value of k such that when this polynomial or dividend is divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 8. So hopefully you can see how this one would be different. Okay, we would obviously, if we were finding the remainder here, we would be taking this k value, which is positive 2 or 2 in this case, and we would be substituting it in for all of x. So let's start by doing that. So we're going to look at p at 2, and that would, of course, equal 3 times 2 to the 4 plus k, 2 to the 3, minus 7 times 2, minus 10. Okay, and we can simplify the right-hand side, and I think you can see that we're going to have a k in it, and the key here to understand is that we are told that the remainder is 8. So p at 2 actually equals 8, okay? And then we can go through and simplify, and we will be able to actually solve for k. So 2 to the 4 is 16, times 3 is 48. We have our k, and I'm just going to actually write it as 2 to the 3, which is 8k, so that you, hopefully you can see exactly how we evaluate. Minus 14, minus 10. We'll do some simplifying here. Okay, so we'll have 8 equals 48 minus 24 is just 24 plus 8k. And then we're going to isolate our k. So we're going to get negative 16 equals 8k. Therefore, k equals negative 2. So these are kind of the little application type questions that we can do with the remainder theorem.